speaking of Vouch, I had a conversation with Vouch. I was not a big fan of it. And we're going to talk about it. Because um, I haven't really talked about it barely at all outside of my own server and a couple of people. I had a debate with Vouch. Um, and uh, I had a lot of thoughts about it. A lot of people didn't see it. But um, a lot of people did see it. And uh, I was very, let's just say I was very, very disappointed by this debate, um, by this debate. And I very, very much uh, hesitate to call it a debate. Um, so how do I even start talking about this? Uh, boy, oh boy, I had a lot of stuff to talk about. So I think it would be an understatement to say that the conversation bothered me. Um, it, it, uh, it, it, it definitely, it definitely bothered me. Um, and part of it was just the, the premise of the conversation. So for those of you who don't know, uh, there was recently a massive destiny.gg pylon to a, a tweet that I made. And you know what? Um, I'm not even going to show the tweet right now because it really isn't necessary. Um, the original tweet was uh, a conversation that Doe and a like six follower account were having, and I jumped in and made a sort of offhanded comment that uh, got retweeted into the DG Geosphere. And by the time that I had woken up from my my nap uh, after tweeting it, there was like 200 quote tweets on it, and by the end there was like 600 plus quote tweets on it, almost all of them from DGG. As in, if you go through and just pick a random name, every single one of them follows the Omni Liberal, and that's about it. So, um it was really funny. And the re and it's it's really interesting to me because I want to talk about this because um it's really really easy to uh m to build a straw man and make fun of someone or try to make fun of someone or dunk on someone for a position that they don't hold. So like for for example, um imagine I'm going to give you like a small example of this, okay? So imagine like I think right now if I was to poll the chat and I was to say, you know, do you think uh that saying um like the the uh the the uh uh petroleum industry CEOs are pieces of shit. If I said that statement in chat, I bet a lot of people would either like agree with it, would probably strongly agree with it. But I could also immediately say, oh, wow. So you think we should just kill those people? We, You think that we should just delete them? What would happen to all of their employees? You want working class people to starve? So it's very easy to take a statement and go insane on it and just make things up to get mad at. And if someone is uh, a unlikable enough figure such as myself other people will uh will jump on board with it and the reality is that in dgg i am an unlikable figure it is literally as gay fish is saying it is the so you hate waffles thing it is um it is i like pancakes so you fucking hate waffles that is what it is it is a severe lack of charitability and if you engage with with uh a low enough level of charitability, you can make anyone sound bad to a hostile audience. That is just the truth. In fact, interestingly, Vosh himself has made a video about this. Um, and, uh, and I think he understands this very well, which is part of the reason why I was incredibly frustrated that when Vosh woke up and went on his stream, and uh decided at his chats uh, at his chats prompt to look at my tweet i was i was uh i was frustrated that he seemed unwilling to look at the other things that i was talking about and to was only willing to fixate on a definitively out of context tweet that had was already getting dogpiled on now um the conversation that ensued, I think, was fucking stupid. Um, and there was a there was a vote in the chat 
Um, and the chat, uh, 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 and the ch well, that was for the second part. He started talking about it before then. You literally argued against the concept that supply chains are necessary. No, I did not. See, this is the thing. Um, if you want to, you can twist any statement into anything else. Uh, Spyro gal, you voted no. Well, implicitly, that means that you were uh you you were really just trying to shut down Vosh's ability to make money off of it. You are a villain for that. So like again, you can literally twist anything if you try hard enough. And if you have an audience that's preferable to that, you can do that. In this particular case, uh my tweet was first of all taken out of context and then I was asked on to Vosh's show to talk about the topic or rather to talk with Vosh about it. And what started was what I consider to be a incredibly bad faith opener to a conversation, which was to respond to my original tweet by saying, well, what do you believe in? So do you believe in supply chains? Now, the funny thing is the conversation was never, ever about whether or not I believed supply chains were a thing or not. Supply chains have many configurations as it turns out there are supply chains as simple as i get my beans from the farmer's market the farmers deliver it to the market and then i buy the beans with money and go home that is a tiny supply chain then there are big complicated consumer supply chains so for example an example of a consumer supply chain is uh a chinese factory manufactures a television that television is bought by lg a korean company lg puts their logo on the tv then they send it to america where it is sold in a best buy who bought a certain amount of stock and then that tv is delivered to the hands of a paying consumer that is another type of supply chain do you understand what i'm saying so when the conversation began and I was asked whether I believed in or advocated against supply chains, I said I felt like that was an absurd question to ask. And then I was immediately accused of trying to avoid the question. But the problem is I was never talking about whether or not supply chains exist as a concept, but rather what types of supply chains are there what happens if you're cut out of a capitalist supply chain how would you source medicine it's actually really funny how easy it would have been for someone to get my opinion if they wanted to but a large amount of people they didn't just not want to engage they were looking specifically for something that could be taken out of context. We call this on Twitch and YouTube clip chimping. They were looking for something out of context to jump on to make sound bad. That's why when I responded to what do you do without a capitalist supply chain, I responded, you should make you should find ways to make your own medicine and source your own medicine outside of the usual supply chain do you understand i think you both were talking past each other yes but there were there's a context that's also important there okay there's a there is a um uh uh there was a sorry i apologize I think you were both talking past each other. That's true, but I was invited on to explain myself, and then I was actively talked past. So I don't think that I'm wrong because somebody else aggressively misinterpreted me. You understand? Sound Judgment says, he literally said, I think she said some other things that obfuscated her original tweet. He was actively ignoring the context. I like Vosh, and I have defended him even recently, but his behavior in that convo was borderline reprehensible. He was not in a state of mind to engage fairly with anyone. He basically admitted it to himself beforehand. I would agree with that reading, to be completely honest. I was baffled in the conversation, and there was a part in which he accused me of being high because I was stumbling on my words a little bit, literally because I didn't know what he was talking about. I did not ask to come on. 
I he people tagged me in chat and I said I will come on if I'm invited and then I was invited. So but let's talk a little bit more specifically. Okay? All right? I don't believe so. I think I said I would go on if I was invited. I don't believe I I I I don't believe I was the first one. Multiple people tagged me. Maybe I did. If I did, I'm willing to own up to that. That's a very small thing. I don't really think it matters that much. If I ask first, fine. I think I may have, there's a I believe it's possible that I was like, "Oh, you should just bring me on instead." But multiple people were tagging me when I was brought on and I said, "I will go on if I'm invited by Vosh." You can check the logs. Yeah. Sure. Let's check we can see. Anyway, again, I don't really care. I I can if I asked first, that's fine. Vosh offered first. I missed him saying it. Oh, okay. That's what... Oh, this is so annoying. Why does any of this detail even matter? None of it matters. Oh my god. Anyway. Okay. So, let's talk about what I was talking about originally. Okay? No, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's wrong order. We'll talk about that after. Let's talk about the conversation. The conversation that ensued was, in my opinion, uh not only just disappointing but i don't want to sound um okay nomad I, I i i hear you on that and i'm gonna get to that please stick around i will i hear you and i will talk about it okay um so the reason why i think the conversation went so bad is because i uh i did and maybe this was the wrong decision to make i did go in expecting that my that like a colleague and friend would be willing to hear out like my frustrations with being misinterpreted especially someone who is constantly constantly um uh 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 miss uh which was constantly being misinterpreted at that point hold on a second i'm getting distracted so i don't know if he mentioned you bringing yeah i don't know we'd have to watch the vod okay whatever sorry I'm all over the place right now. Let's focus and not get stun locked about who asked first. Whew. Point is, uh, I was frustrated going into the conversation. And I recognize that probably made me sound a little pissed off. But I was very frustrated from the get-go because, specifically because, Vosh was reacting only to the, the out-of-context tweet when I had literally written a thread about what I thought a broader about the topic and was openly willing to discuss it further, but no such thing occurred. I was simultaneously being asked questions about a 1,000-year future world, which I never advocated for a 1,000-year future world. I was talking very specifically about what we do now and in the near future, if people are cut out of or if capitalist supply lines collapse. I was never talking about whatever the fuck everybody else was going on about. So when I came in, I was attempting to explain to Vosh that I was tr that my point had been misinterpreted and I wanted to get the actual point out. This was immediately assumed to be w being slippery. In fact, I believe he said that I was being slippery and then shortly after began to say that I was playing victim because I expressed frustration at being misrepresented. That was very annoying to me. And also, I think, a giant waste of time. This conversation was an opportunity for us to actually talk about real politics, and instead, it became immediately a, a tribunal on my Twitter behavior and on my personality. And this continued and got even worse. At one point during the conversation, Vosh misheard me. Now, I have verified this myself. I have had two people transcribe it for me. You can go check it yourself. There was a point in which Vosh misheard what I asked and accused me of saying that the FDA doesn't get us anywhere. I did not say that. I was asking simply where we were going with a conversation about the FDA specifically. He interpreted that wrong. He misheard me and then accused me of gaslighting him. And then when I pushed back on that, he then called me a victim again and said that I, that I was trying to have a meta conversation about the conversation 
instead of as a way to distract from the point at hand, which is the most uncharitable, dickish way of interpreting somebody going, bro, you just said to your audience of 15,000 people that I was gaslighting you when you misheard. You just said that I was being an abuser to your massive fucking audience. That's kind of important to me. It's actually more important to me that you're telling your followers that I'm an abuser because you misheard me. That is more important to me than whatever stupid disagreement you have with my tweet. And guess what, guys? I think that's rational. I don't think that I am irrational or abusive or gaslighting for saying that I think that my tweet is less important than you telling your audience that I'm an abuser and a gaslighter. If you want to accuse me of abuse or gaslighting, I will expect you with an accusation of that level to come with some motherfucking receipts. But let's be real. What actually happened was that Vosh, being extremely careless in the moment, got extremely triggered about a tweet that I made, Didn't was not willing to listen to what I had to say about it, instead ran with the interpretation that DGG did and then jumped on the dog pile, called me abusive and gaslighting because he misheard me. I don't think that I don't think I'm wrong at all for being frustrated with that. I don't think I'm wrong for not wanting to maintain to stay in that conversation. When I said how many times did I say that I think we should end the conversation? And yes, while it is true, I could have hung up. I was hoping that we could come to a peaceable peaceable agree to disagree end. But Vosh was not willing to have that sort of end. He was determined to prove me as an abusive dumb fuck at that point, which I think is a really bad faith way of engaging. And I didn't like it. And I still don't like it. And I think it was shitty. I also think it was egregiously shitty to stand in front of your audience and tell them I'm a gaslighter because your stupid ass misheard. Sorry, maybe that's a little bit assholeish to say, but I think I'm right. <sighs> now, if you all are interested, we can talk about what the what conversation could have been had if instead it wasn't about jumping on a dog pile and trying to determine me as an abusive person over a tweet. Which, boy oh boy, doesn't that feel a little hypocritical? Doesn't that feel like just a little hypocritical to like do the tweet canceling thing from Vosh? The guy who's been canceled over his, was actively being canceled over a tweet? Come on. Anyway, let's talk about the actual subject at hand, okay? Let's do it, shall we? You all, you all interested? You all interested in what we're talking about? Sure, let's fucking talk about it. So I've been thinking about this. I've, believe it or not, been reading about this. And in fact, Doe has also been reading about this and sharing lots of stuff with me, which feels fucking sick as fuck. So let's actually talk about what I was talking about here, okay? So what I was trying to talk about is the fact that as it currently stands, the world, medicine as we know it, the, the medical institutions, the way that we get drugs, pharmacy, pharmaceuticals, medicine, is entirely built on top of the profit motive. You understand that? We have insurance. We have privatized, pa we have patent ownership by pharmaceutical companies. We have production owned by those pharmaceutical companies. You have no way to access medicine besides getting a job and paying for the medicine or getting a job so you can get insurance to pay for the medicine. If you're lucky, you might live in a state that has Medicare or Medicaid, and you might be able to get on one of those, but that is not a guarantee. And those are what those do is just have the government pay the private corporations for the medication. So, um, so it's a little bit fucking, you know, so, so, so that's the, that's the start point. That's where we're at right now. And in a world where everything is locked behind money, um, medicinally is locked behind money you might go well then maybe i should do it myself and you go well damn medicine is very complicated yes it is but if you can't afford it you don't have anything else and if you're in pain or you're dying and you still don't have money 
and you're in pain or dying, you might not be able to get money. So what happens when you are the one who is cut out of the currently existing supply lines? Odd. Now we're in a different circumstance, are we? What do you do if you don't have the money to pay for your life-saving medication? You have a couple of options. You either steal it, you either find a miracle way to get that medication legitimately, you make it yourself, or you buy it on the gray market. And gray markets are often, interestingly, uh, qualified drug producers in other countries who sell these things via technically not legal routes. Let us, let us uh, continue. Now, there are some medications that are very, very, very difficult to produce. There are other medications that are not difficult to produce. Let me give some examples of this for people who are interested in this topic. An example of a medicine that is not difficult to produce is weed. Ima cannabis is one of the most effective painkillers in the world, one of the most effective painkillers, and it can be grown from the ground. Oh my God. So there's an, there's an example of a medicine that's super easy to, to DIY. You want to know what else about that medicine? It's also quite safe because there isn't a profit incentive to taint the, t the weed. And also the effects of weed are relatively minor. So it's actually super easy to just test it and be safe. It's also super easy to cross test. So one weed farm makes weed tests another weed farm, and that weed farm tests the other weed farm's weed, and they both go, yep, this is clean weed, because they're doing it for the good of, of, of people being able to enjoy weed. Now, obviously, profit motives fuck this up, but that's what we're trying to address. We're trying to get rid of the stuff that fucks it up. Now, there are other medications that are not so easy to make, okay? Some of those um, are to treat extremely, extremely niche illnesses, very, very rare illnesses that only some people have, and therefore it's difficult to produce. Now, if there is a medication that require that is very, very difficult to produce, don't you think that we should reserve special supply lines for that type of medicine? Because... Right now, the way it works is that capitalist supply lines control everything, including niche medicine. Now, because of the profit margin, that means that we have giant drug factories and that we have extremely stringent, highly bureaucratic drug supply lines, which cut people out who then die from that disease. I think as people who alleged to be leftists and anarchists that perhaps we should go, oh my God, this is a very, very bad situation for us to be in. Our This niche medicine is patented, controlled, and manufactured only by corporations, which means if you're the one who's sick, you have to pay that corporation. We should build free nonprofit supply lines for complicated medications. And it might be hard to do, but we should do it because it saves people's lives and we're leftists. No one ever said that we are going to delete all chemists, that we are going to delete all chemistry, that we are going to delete all factories. The factories exist already. The professionals exist already. The, the, the materials exist already. They are all being exploited by capitalism. And what I'm trying to say is we should find ways to break down the ex ex specifically exclusive consumer supply lines and replace them with better things, some of which might not look at all like what we imagine now. And guess what? There are chemists, specialists, shipping specialists who can figure it out and do. An example of this. Did you know that all over the world there is a black market 
for designer drugs. I'm talking drugs that, that get you high in a way that you can only produce in a lab. Drugs which could kill you if they weren't pure. Illicit drugs are a for-profit black market industry, and yet they still manage to somehow maintain purity. And if someone makes a drug that's impure, unless they got it secondhand from like a, a skeezy dealer, guess what? You know, more or less, who made your designer drug. And you can go and take umbrage with them. And other people will as well. And that's not a free market solution. That is a reputation-based system, which is what most of the world already runs off. Can you clarify the difference between bureaucracy and profit motives? Because I feel people get those mixed up. Bureaucracy, okay, when I hear, okay, the term bureaucracy refers to systems of government that are powered by unelected bureaucrats who oversee loads and loads and loads of paperwork. That is what a bureaucracy is. Bureaucracy is not a substitute word for any form of organization or any form of, of record keeping or any form of doing your homework. A bureaucracy is specifically designed to deal with legal bloat. The reason why the United States and the USSR are the most famous bureaucracies in the world is because we have extremely inefficient, unjust legal systems that require an un and such an expensive cost. And guess what? Some corporations function as bureaucracies as well because some corporations are working with the government and their employees are not elected and they are basically pencil pushers who are in partnership with the government so to be clear for the record you're not saying get rid of supply chains but rather make them better it, you can't get rid of supply chains that's like saying get rid of air you can't a supply chain is a thing that exists the goal is to stop using and stop relying on capitalist supply lines highly bureaucratic highly centralized capitalist supply lines which deliver to paying consumers not people who need it those capitalist supply lines those consumer supply lines deliver to consumers not to those in need so if I seem a little frustrated about this particular topic, it's because I have had a thousand people, no joke, literally, like a thousand people tweeting the most like bird brained uh, bad straw man of a single tweet I made because fucking Destiny retweeted it to his audience and then Vosh jumped on it, which I don't appreciate for the record. The point is, okay. Let me offer you, and here's another direction that I'm going to go with this, okay? There is a difference, and some and somebody by the name of Counterpoints. I'm going to give a little tiny, little tiny bit of, uh, um, I'm going to give a little tiny bit of, 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 uh, of credence to Counterpoints here, okay? Counterpoints made a tweet, and he said that the, the problem with, he watched the conversation, and he said, and I'm quoting approximately, the problem here is that Demon Mama is talking about anarchist solutions in the here and now, and Vosh wants to talk about a 1,000-year anarchist project. And that is true. I am not, I don't believe in a thing like a 1,000-year anarchist project. I don't think that we can even conceive of that, because I think that all that we can really do is think of worlds that we want, that we want to aim for, and work on them in the here and now. I can, wait, wait, wait. But that's the thing. Hanubia, to be fair, I can see how someone could have gotten tripped up on my tweets. I can too, but I was not allowed to explain the trip up. Uh, anyway, let's talk about something, okay? Good Faith Actor says, there seems to be a trend of you arguing against how a thing is distributed or administered and people interpreting it as you arguing against the thing itself. Curious, I know. Yeah, here's the tweet. Let me show you the tweet right here, okay? This is a great tweet. I wanna quote counterpoints directly. And I will point out, I have had a fantastic conversation with counterpoints specifically about anarchism, okay? Demon Mama is an anarchist and believes in the power of parallel structures. 
I don't think Vosh is an anarchist unless it's on a millennia law along project and ideal. That is the disconnect in this conversation. Now, I don't know that I would agree with his wording exactly, but I agree, agree with his sentiment. Vosh and I had very, very different approaches, and the difference was Vosh didn't seem willing to consider that what I, the person who wrote the tweet, was talking about could have been differently than what he, having read all of DGG's shitty ass uh, straw men about it, was talking about. And given that he's the one asking the questions, I feel like maybe he should have offered me a little bit better faith. Come on. So, that was a bit of a distraction. Let's get back to the main point, okay? Let me ask you something. What happens? What happens right now? Let's just, I want you just to do a thought experiment with me, okay? We're going to just sit here. You, right now, statistically, probably take some medications. I want you to close your eyes and imagine a world in which, uh, let's say, a world not far from here. Let's imagine you actually live in Ukraine. And one day, Russians invade, and they destroy the supply lines to the stores going into your town, okay? How do you get the medication that you take every day now? You go to the pharmacy? Well, the pharmacy's gone or closed or out of stock. So now what? You have medicine you need. Where do you get it? You ask your friends? You ask your found family? Well, it turns out in our modern world, if something bad happens, you usually just die. Yeah, that's right. Here in America, you don't have money, you don't have a home, you're, you, you, you just die. And in a country where something like a disaster happens, like an invasion or, you know, a series of natural disasters like wildfires that wipe out your town, uh, wow, we don't. We don't actually know where to get any of our medicine outside of the pharmacies near us. Now, if you're lucky, you might have access to a credit card and the internet. And then you might be able to order your medicine online. But guess what? There's a problem with that. Because if you're in the area that's affected by a natural disaster, war, or anything else like that, how the fuck are you going to get a delivery? So do you just die? Now, when I think about that, you might go, damn, Demon Mama, isn't that a bit apocalyptic? Do you know when we live? Do you know what's... Do you Have you forgotten that we've lived in a pandemic for two years in which... Uh, how many people are dead in America now because of, lack of, because, of, because of our lack of response to this disaster? How many? Over a million? I haven't even checked recently. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Can we see? Let's take a look. United States. Fatal cases. 971,000 Americans have died amidst the super advanced medical state of the United States. What if that's you next time? What if that's you next year? What if that's you in six months? You know that right now in Ukraine and Russia, both countries, which uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, all of the citizens could have been peacefully enjoying their social media and playing video games, that in Russia, they are now d d absolutely dunked into a complete uh, economic destruction, that the average person can't get any money and is struggling with food in Russia, that in Ukraine, if you're in one of the war-torn areas, you have nothing. And the reason for that is because we have been made reliant on exclusive systems. We sit here every day looking at other countries having mass casualty events. We sit here every single day looking at our own country having a medical mass casualty event. And then we go, yeah, 
We don't need to address this at all. We don't need to have alternatives. We don't need to make uh, uh, med medicinal knowledge available to as many people as possible. People who literally aren't allowed to get to get training, who literally can't afford to go to medical school, who literally can't afford to pay their rent. We need to equip as many people with as much knowledge as possible. We need to find the people out there who can't afford to go to the school, who actually turns out they're gifted, gifted fucking chemists. Do you know how many people are geniuses but don't ever get to go to college? Don't ever get to learn anything? A lot. It's a lot. The majority of geniuses that have ever lived will never get to live up to their full potential because it's locked behind literally the dice, the dumb, the worst gamble of money ever. Money is concentrated in the hands of a handful of capitalists worldwide. Everyone else, that includes you, unless you happen to be Jeff Bezos, is going to get fucked. And guess what? Right now, capitalism is not having a good time. Climate change is crawling up on us. And we rely on highly, on not just highly, 100% profit motive systems in order to be okay. And he, here's the real thing I want you all to think about. When shit goes bad in capitalism, um, when shit goes bad in capitalism, um, do you know what happens first? No one is denied directly, usually. What happens first is the price goes up and then you can't afford it. That's what happens. And if you think you're free of that, well, you're not. Because see, there's always somebody richer than you in capitalism. So as long as they can afford it, and as long as uh, they're willing to pay for it, you're just fucked. So let's say there's a life-saving medicine and you, a poor person, um, you know, you, a poor person, need that medicine, but the price goes up by $100 a month. You can't afford it, but the guy next door to you, the guy across town from you who makes twice your income can easily afford it. They're still fine. It can go up $1,000, and uh, or it can go up uh, $1,200 per year, and they can afford it, but you can't. You just disappear. You just stop getting your medicine. Do you understand what I'm saying? This was not your original tweet. As it turns out, I don't know if you caught this, but tweets only have fucking 200 characters in them. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Gayfesh. I appreciate that. I even made, I even out of good faith, out of a, out of a, a, a tongue-in-cheek good faith I literally made a thread about it but this is the problem you see this is the problem with the way that everyone engages on this but also the way that Vosh engaged on this and part of the thing that made me frustrated I've seen people cry because their insurance wouldn't cover their necessary top shelf meds it makes me furious people did not ask to have these ailments I agree and we must acknowledge that the current system locks many people out and that we are not done ref changing things. And that, in fact, so many people, that we are literally chained to a system that doesn't have to function this way. You realize that we choose to make supply lines function the way they do. We choose to build consumer supply lines where you buy things from bu people who buy things from people who buy things instead of saying, wait a minute, we have a need, our population. Imagine an alternate world, guys. Imagine an alternate world where somebody says, I have an ailment. Is there a medicine that we can that can solve it? And you go, yes, this pharmacy produces a medicine that can solve it. Here's the necessary science that proves this. And then that person's doctor can go, I need that medicine. And then that medicine gets delivered to that doctor, to that person. And we have a supply chain built for that purpose. Not for the purpose of making money, not for the purpose of preserving patents, not for the purpose of, uh, of, of upholding the economy, but rather to deliver the medicine to the people in need, to deliver and produce it to the people in need. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I've been talking about. <sighs> Wasn't the NHS built upon that ideal? Yes! 
Many, many universal systems go for that approach. Now, there are problems still with universal health care, but they do start to alleviate this. And you want to know what they do? Guys, here's the hot take. Ready? Ready for the hottest hot take of all? You ready? Are you fucking ready? Here we, here, here, here we go. Building an NHS would equal blowing up every capitalist supply line in America. <gasps> oh no! Remember when Doe made that joke about blowing up supply lines? As it turns out, Doe was joking about the fact that any change that you make for the betterment of people would, by definition, destroy consumerist supply lines. They would, and they did. Other countries that have national health care systems were willing to destroy the existing very bad supply lines and build new ones. Infernatrix Sophia says, it was mo motivated reasoning the entire time. There was a pretty clear push to misunderstand you. He was actively searching for a specific interpretation of straw man and everything became a retrofit. I do tend to agree with that interpretation. I, I do. Uh, sorry. But I think that's accurate. I think Vosh was very mad. I don't know why he was mad. I expressed confusion at why he was mad. I expressed confusion as to why he was calling me a gaslighter. And I expressed confusion as to why he was calling me an abuser. And then his response to that was, stop playing the victim. You, uh, you're, you're better than this. Which I think is, a, is an asshole, uh, bad faith thing to do, personally. I'm not so sure about that. There's any number of reasons why someone could get hung up over trivial details, but perhaps I'm being too charitable. Well, see, that's the thing. There was, uh, there was no charitability given to me, and the power, and the and the the power of the show was in Vosh's hands. Vosh chose to look at my tweet that was getting dogpiled on. Vosh chose to not look at my other stream, and then Vosh chose to interrogate me as if I have a history of being a bad faith actor when I don't. Tal990 says, Vosh misheard you when he called you a gaslighter and acknowledged it when chat point pointed out after the bait. Yeah, a little late. Maybe he should issue a bit of a, maybe he should say something. Maybe he should apologize for that because he went really fucking hard on that point and he didn't have to. He could have just not been an asshole, but he was. So whatever. And this isn't the first time. I still remember King at Pride. I still think, uh, I still remember that this is the fucking way it goes. I... I am treated with zero charitability in this space. And that's not me fucking... I'm not the only one said this. Fucking Xander Hall fucking said this. Xander Hall pointed out that every single person who fucking engages with me in this space straight up gives me zero charitability. And most of that is because of, of a particular creator who spent a year spreading explicit lies about me to every single person in this space. So everyone comes at me as if I'm the villain of the day. Even outside of everything else, that was one of the worst showings for Vosh when it came to engaging with a point. I literally didn't get it. If I sounded, if in that conversation I sounded bewildered and confused, it's because I was. I do not know why anyone was as mad at me as they were outside of the the dgg hates my guts and so the entirety of the dgg net was jumping on that tweet because they already hate my guts i, I uh, by the way another thing i'll note this is something that really annoyed me I, i'm just sorry just listen up for a second this is something that personally annoyed me and some of you in this chat may be guilty of this so uh let me just say uh the people who said that i was being um like a piece of shit and really rude i implore you to go back and watch again i don't think there was a single point in that entire conversation where i made any accusations about vosh's personality i don't think there was any point in which i insulted him or his platform i think the only thing i said was and i'm gonna cop to this at the very very end of the conversation I said, I feel like you're schizo posting at me because I felt like he was making up things completely unrelated to what I said and saying them to me. And perhaps that was a misspeak, but I will point out that it happened at the very end after I'd already been accused of being a gaslighter and after I'd already been accused of being an abuser. So I think that when people go and watch that and they say I was being a piece of shit, that you're literally Fox Newsing yourself. If you go back and watch that, I would like to see. I asked 
openly on my server for people to give me clips of me insulting Vosh or of me making aspersions about his person about his personality. Didn't do it. No clips. Didn't see fucking any of it. Yeah, and he called me literally Hassan. So what the fuck? He said that like three times. I do agree with everything you're saying here, but that debate was emblematic of my problem with generally debates in general. It's the reason why I switch off whenever a debate happens. I enjoy your content a lot. Uh, that And that's 90% of your content. It's hard to put into words what the problem was. The debates are impossible for me to have because the, the fact of the matter is that uh, the only debates that I can have that are any fun is debates against conservatives. And the reason for that is because uh, conservatives, we can just dunk on freely. And you don't have to pretend that there's good faith because the reality is that most online debates cannot be in good faith and never will be, even between friends and colleagues. And they almost never go anywhere. It's just true. And part of that is the fault of the debate bros. Part of that is the fault of the people who supposedly like to do debate but don't actually have master over, mastery over their craft outside of making a personal brand. If that's your only goal, great. Fun bun. Vosh asked you at some point if you would sue your dealer as a joke and a little time later admitted what a stupid point that was. Oh, yeah. Also, sorry not to keep ranting, but that is why you watch me. Um, Not to keep ranting, but he also said that I was making ANCAP arguments, which is so motherfucking stupid. That made me so angry. What the fuck? I was literally making the opposite. It was such a stupid, a stupid allegation. ANCAPs don't care. They believe that the, the supply chain should be as privatized as possible. I was not making ANCAP arguments. I was specifically saying the opposite. Let's make s explicitly non-profit reputation-based systems that check one another for the good of the, of the stated goal. Let's find out ways to fund those things in the modern time that doesn't involve building a profit incentive. It was so stupid. Like, the idea that that's an ANCAP argument is just genuinely, that was one of the stupidest things said in that entire conversation, and no one gave a shit. Because, again, the charitability was out the window from the get-go. Which is, personally, quite ob obnoxious to me. Quite fucking obnoxious. Also, they immediately jumped to the ANPRIM thing, and I'm specifically not an ANPRIM! I am literally make arguments against anarcho-primitivism! It's so stupid. But again, there was no attempt at good faith at all. So fucking annoying. Are you an Anprim? No. Do you believe in what Anprims believe? No, I don't. Can you demonstrate that you don't believe in what Anprims believe? Yes, I do not. I'm not anti-technology. I'm not anti-invention. I'm not anti-science. I don't believe that we should return to being hunter-gatherers. I just think that things that we do right now are not good and there are ways that we could do them better and there are things that we already discovered in the past that aren't being used right now because they're not profitable that we could use so annoying so fucking annoying yeah but have you thought about this monkey